We're going to start this video off with a little flash forward. This is what we'll end up with when we're done. But I want to make sure I point out one very, very critical point. These M5 by 10 screws with the hammer nuts behind them need to be just snug when you first install them. The T-nuts behind these screws that actually clamp down toward the extrusions have got serrations on the back sides of them. And if you over tighten them, you're going to lose the ability to make fine adjustment of the locations of these plastic pieces. And that's going to make things very difficult later when we want to make sure that everything's moving free, nice and smooth. So when I say snug these down, literally just tighten them down finger tight, no tighter than that. We're going to go back and tighten everything up at the end of the process. But by just snugging these things down so they hold the plastic pieces in place while allowing you to get everything else fitted in the right locations is going to go a long way to making sure that your printer is nice and smooth when you're all done. Now, it's not a total loss if you over tighten them. You can always loosen the extrusions, take them out, flip them 90 degrees or 180 degrees and put them back in place. And you'll have a nice fresh area where you can mount these again. But, you know, that'll slow down the build process and we want to avoid it if at all possible. So remember, don't over tighten these, just get them snug. The next part of the assembly will require the use of our upper and lower Z-nut mounts uh, and our 8mm by 400mm linear rods. In the next step of our assembly process, we're going to install the upper and lower Z-rod mounts. We're going to do that by using this tool. This tool presses onto the extrusion and touches against the front face of the forward part of the printer and allows you to properly locate exactly where this uh, upper Z-rod mount and the lower Z-rod mount are going to go. That's going to ensure that the rods and all the mounts are in the exact same plane off the front of the machine, ensuring the alignment. Then we're going to install the Z-carriage and then put the rods through and install the other upper and lower Z-rod uh, mounts and they're going to be located by the spacing of the carriage and the location where the rods need to be. So as long as we've got this set up perfectly, everything's going to stack forward from there. The first step is to insert a M8, I'm sorry, an M5 by 10 screw through the top of the Z rod mount and in order to make sure that we're being consistent, we're going to put a clamp right here. And that's going to ensure that this is always firmly pressed against uh, this location and this isn't going to move. Then we're going to take our mount, drop it in place over the extrusion, and tighten it in place. Once that in place, you can remove the tool. And you'll want to grab another M5 by 8 or M5 by 10 screw. Thread it in advance on your T-nut. And then you're going to pass it through the rectangular opening in the mount that we just placed and then tighten that in place also. When you tighten it down, make sure that it's in the center of the slot. Okay, now we're going to repeat the process for one of the lower mounts. We're going to place our handy dandy locating tool in place. Make sure it's pressed firmly against the front of the frame. Drop that mount in place. And we're going to repeat the process for the other side. I've now mounted all of the Z rod holders for the front of the frame. And I've mounted all of the screws and all the locations to hold them steady. Next thing we're going to do is this is a little fiddly the first time you do it, but we're going to pass 
the Z rods through from the top. Once you got them through, if you give them a little bit of a rotation or rotate them a little bit, they'll kind of go through smoothly. And drop them in place all the way down until they go through the lower Z rod mount. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. That's not too bad. Now that we've done that, we are going to kind of repeat this process in reverse now. Mounting the lower Z rod holder here, passing the rod through, and then mounting it up top. We're going to do that kind of in a, in a loose way. We're not going to tighten anything down until the next step. So what I've done is I've mounted the lower Z rod holders here and here on the opposite side with just the screw that comes in from the top. Now I'm going to pass the Z rod through the linear bearings and into the lower Z rod holder. Okay, just so it's all the way through. And I'm going to repeat the process on the other side. Once you've done that, you can now press the Z-Rod holder against the side of the frame and snug down the M5 by 10 screw that comes in from the top. It does not have to be tight at this point. We're going to do the same thing, kind of wiggling a little bit to make sure that you've got it just right lined up with the rod. Um, and just the, the sheer fact of you pulling it away from the rod flat up against the extrusion is going to make sure that it stays aligned. Okay, now I can tell that the frame pulled a little bit when I did that, which means that the spacing of the Z carriages on the bed frame are not exactly right. So in order to relieve any strain, I'm going to loosen all of these. Ah, I see it moved quite a bit when I loosened that one. All right. I went ahead and put uh, the T-nuts through the upper Z-rod holders, and now we're going to place those. Just gently work them onto the top of the rods and push them down like so on both sides. Okay, <clears throat> at this point we don't need to turn, tighten these down at all because all we want to do is make sure that the bed frame is nice and free, all right? Nice and flush with the edges. It's okay if it's not perfectly aligned, if the carriages aren't perfectly aligned with the ends at this point. Okay, now we can go back with our M3 driver and snug these down. Again, not to final tightness, just snug enough so they're not going to move. Now that we have the bed snug down again, and these are nice and snug, we need to get these placed properly. And to do that, we're actually going to flip the frame onto its front face. We're going to slide the bed all the way up here until it's topped out. And we're going to loosen the nuts here. Give them a little bit of a wiggle until they find kind of their home there. And snug them back in place. They really didn't move very much, so they were pretty close to where they needed to be. And I'm going to test the bed by kind of moving it back and forth, and it actually feels really good. You want to make sure that there's no excess rumbling, and everything's nice and smooth. And the key test is that it, it smoothly falls under its own weight, and there's no, when you're you know moving it, 
slowly, you don't feel any rumbly, you know, kind of feeling in the bearings. Everything's very light and uh, there's no sensation that it's dragging or sticking or anything else like that. Now that we've got this all in place, let's go ahead and push kind of the nuts down or the Z rods down so they're flush at the top. This will be their final kind of resting location. This is how they're going to be when you have them installed. Okay, just like that. And we're going to get four M, uh, M3 by 20 screws and four lock nuts. And we're going to pass them through. Now the orientation is actually really important here. So this being the front of the machine, we're going to pass the M3 screw through the Z-nut holder, like so, and then attach a lock nut here. The reason why this is really important is because in the next few steps we're going to be installing one of the uh, XY motors here and here and if you make it so the head of the screw is here and the motor is in place there's going to be no way you're going to get at that screw to loosen it. It's much easier to just have the nut here where you can reach it with an open wrench or a pair of needle nose pliers if you need to. So you're going to uh, put that there and we're just going to snug that up. And what we're looking for is for this to kind of start pinching it just a little bit. You don't want to bottom it out. Uh, ideally, you want to really stop when the threads are coming all the way through the, um, the lock nut right here. That's, that's about where you'd want to stop. And we're going to go ahead and repeat this eight times on this side and all the way on the other side. Now that I've installed the M3 by 20 screws with lock nuts and all of the Z-Rod mounts, I can do the final checks to make sure that everything's nice and straight and smooth. You want to make sure that you, again, cycle the bed up and down and it should be free. It should feel no drag or bumpiness or anything like that. It should be a nice smooth motion. If you have any issues whatsoever, what you want to do is loosen these uh, M5 by 10 screws at the carriages, wiggle everything around. The last thing we're going to need to take a look at uh, are the actual Z-Rods. They're available in a variety of different lengths, but they're all in 100 centimeter increments, unless you can buy them, you know, cut the size somewhere. These are 400 millimeter uh, rods, and you're going to need to cut off uh, about 30 millimeters off the bottom of each of these. And you can use a Dremel tool with a fiber reinforced cutoff wheel, or if you have an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel, that's even better. Um, a hacksaw is not going to do anything. Uh, these are hardened steel rods and are going to be very difficult to cut through. But we will need to cut these off because we're going to have uh, the LCD and ramps mount over here. We're going to have a power supply over here. Uh, the rear ones, you could probably leave them the way they are. You know, you definitely are going to need to cut off the two front ones in order to make room for the components we're going to have to mount here up front. That's going to do it for today. Stay tuned for the next installment where we're going to install the Z motors with the lead screws. And we're going to install uh, the Z nut mounts and the Z nuts so that they're attached to the bed. Uh, once that's installed, the actual Z assembly of the printer will be complete. And then we can move on to the Core XY mechanism.